Pre-calc chapter 4, section 5, we're going to start graphing trig functions. We're going to look at our sine and cosine today and uh, how to graph those. And we're going to keep translating those on the graph that we've done with our other functions. So when we look at uh, a graph, it comes from the unit circle. When we take the unit circle and you're going around it, um, as their x and y values change along here, they're periodic. They keep repeating. So if I take a point and as I move it along the circle, and if I take and unroll that, we get shapes like this. That would then repeat again, and then would repeat again. And so as you move along, so like the red point would be the start, and as we move along it and unravel it, you'd have these different points along the curve. Uh, and it depends upon the equation, the shifting, the, the stretching, uh, where these would be at. And so we're going to take the unit circles, our trig functions that, that repeat, and unwrap them onto a coordinate plane. Um, and so we have some properties we first need to look at or describe. And our um, an amplitude is half the distance from the minimum to the maximum. So you could also think of it as the, the height of a wave here. So this would be the amplitude. Uh, from the horizontal to the top. Now, if I start moving the graph up or down, it, we're not going to have the x-axis to be the midpoint. So that's why the definition says you take the distance from the max to the min, and you take half of that distance. The period is one cycle of the curve. So if we are looking at one cycle without repeating any of this, there's one cycle of the wave after that I'm repeating the wave again. And then other special points we're going to be looking at or helping us graph is a max, a min, and the intercepts. And uh, these intercepts, we call them intercepts on the parent function, they are the x-intercepts. But as we shift it, they may be of a trans translated axis. Uh, if you translate the x-axis with the shifting, then you can still find the intercepts. So let's graph some. Now, transformations, uh, this would be the parent function, and then it could also be written like this. And so what's changed in it? The A value, the number in front, which I sometimes call that awesome A value, still is our vertical stretch. So it's a vertical scalar. Uh, a is also the amplitude. So that vertical scalar, when it stretches it vertically, it's telling you what the amplitude is going to be. The range is always between the negative A and A, because that A is our scalar. scalar. The period, how big the period is, is always 2 pi over B. Uh, B is the horizontal shrink or stretch. Now, B in this one, notice how B is being multiplied to X, so it's the horizontal shrink or stretch. Now, that affects everything in this parenthesis. So we're going to talk more about that in the future. But we do 2 pi over B to figure out how... Uh, how long the period would be. So our C value is the horizontal translation. And I should something add something. If if B has been factored out. If you want to see the horizontal translation, how much we move it left or right, you need to factor out that B value. So if I had a function like sine of 2x minus 3, if I had that, that 2 has been multiplied into this parenthesis, so it's already been multiplied to 3. So if I actually want to see how far it's been moved, I need to factor the 2 out to see that the graph has actually been moved 3 halves to the right, so 1 and a half right. So <clears throat> factoring the b out will help you see what the translation is. Uh, typically, I don't say that students need to do that. Um, to find the horizontal start and finish, you can solve two equations, uh, or bx minus c, which is the part inside the parenthesis. So this quantity inside the parenthesis here includes the horizontal translation and the stretch or shrink. So we take that portion, and we set it equal to 0, and we set it equal to 2 pi, then we'll figure out where we start and end. I typically look at just the starting value here, 
solve that one and then I just add our period and I use those two things to figure out where we start and end. Um, now the reason why we use zero is only because sine and cosine and this we're looking at sine and cosine here they always start at zero. Um, so our sine of zero and our cosine of zero that's our starting point for our, our period or our parent function. Um, and so if we apply the bx minus c to that zero, we can show what's happened to the uh, parent function's starting value. And then d is the vertical shift, and that can be written before at or after it. And so we're going to look at a few examples here, and then we'll be done. So to graph this, let's first write down some pre-knowledge. So I always start with the amplitude. The amplitude is this a value here, 4. So I know that's how high uh, the wave's going to go. And then I find the period. The period here is 2 pi over b, and our b value here is 1. So our period is going to be 2 pi. And if you need to rewrite like the a sine of bx plus c kind of setup, you can do that. So then our starting value, if I take our parentheses x plus pi, I set it equal to 0, and I solve that x equals negative pi is where we're starting. And if I take the negative pi plus our period, I find pi. So this is our starting x value, and then our ending value is going to be at pi, which is 2 pi away from our starting. We also should see that we're going up 2, and we are going left uh, pi, and that kind of shows us here with our, our marking already where we're starting. And so I can shift my y-axis and my x-axis by going up 2 here. So this would be the new x and y axis. I am starting here at 0. Uh, this is my starting value. And then my end value is going to be on the axis as well. Sine starts on the origin, goes up, down, and then back up. That's the parent function, just sine x. Cosine x starts at a maximum, goes down, and then back up. And so those are the behaviors I'm going to use to help me graph this. I know where I start, I know where I end. These are two of the intercepts. So we have at negative pi, we are at 2. And then we are another, and our ending intercept is at pi, we're also at 2. If I divide it in half, I'm at 0, that's also going to be an intercept then the maximum is found by going halfway between these two points. So it's kind of the quarter of the period. So negative pi halves, I'm going to use my amplitude, I'm going to go up 4. It's going to be up here. And then the other, the minimum, I'm going to find the other quartile, the quarter between the midpoint and the end, and I go down 4. Then I can sketch the graph between these two points. And it's going to continue on past it on both directions. But that would be one um, period of the sine wave. And so it's very important to find that the beginning, the end, and I split it into quartiles. So every the, the different quarter. So beginning, end, I find the midpoint, then I find the first quartile, and I find the third quartile, because those give me those give me the intercepts, the max, the intercept, the minimum and then the intercept. And so I can use those points to, to plot the, the graph. So let's do it again. This one is now a cosine. So we still have an amplitude here. The amplitude is 2. Uh, we can still find the period. The period is 2 pi over b. Our b value again is 1, the number multiplied to x. So 2 pi. Now, the tricky thing is, what is this negative 5 doing in the graph? The negative 5 is actually moving it down 5. It's not moving, it's not uh, being applied to the x. Or operations, I have to do the cosine, then multiply by 2, then subtract 5. So we're going down 5. 
my starting point would be taking our x value and just setting equal to the normal start point, which is 0. If I add 2 pi, we're ending at 2 pi. So I know I'm going from 0 to 2 pi. I'm shifting it down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's my new uh, x axis. So I'm starting ending at those two spots. Now my period is 2, but for the cosine, the cosine starts at the max. So cosine actually has 0, it's at its max, it ends up being negative 3. It's 2 up our new uh, x-axis, the shift, so we're actually at negative 3. So the ending is going to end at that as well. So the ending is actually going to be another max. The max at negative at 2 pi, we're still at negative 3. So for cosine, I'm starting at the max, going down, then back up. So I'm going to go max, intercept, minimum, intercept, max. That's going to kind of be the order for cosine. So I find my midpoint, and I find my quarters. So I break it into those four chunks. So I'm going to go max, intercept, so max, intercept, minimum. So I'm going to go down to my amplitude, intercept, max. And so I can use that amplitude to just plot those points. And I'm going to curve it back down because it's periodic. So that would be the cosine. Now let's do one more. So the negative sine 2x plus pi. I wanted to do one here that had a, a b value that was not 1. So our amplitude here is negative 1. It's still 1. The negative just is a reflection. So 1 is the actual amplitude, but we have to state that it's been reflected um, over the x-axis. Our period is 2 pi over b. Our b value is 2. So we end up getting pi. So if we want to figure out where we're starting, I take the 2x plus pi. I set it to the usual starting point, which is 0. So then I'm going to subtract pi. Then I'm going to divide by 2. So x is negative pi halves is our starting spot. So negative pi halves is here. If I add our period, so if I add a pi to that, I end up at pi halves. So pi halves is where we're going to end. We're going to finish there. So it's going to be actually a horizontal shrink. And we should recall that from previous. When that number is bigger than 1, it's a horizontal shrink. If it's a fraction between 0 and 1, it ends up actually horizontal stretching it. So <clears throat> we have our beginning value. We have our end value. And then we want to split it into quartiles. So we have our middle. And then we have our quarters. Um, it's not been shifted up or down at all, and the sign starts at the origin here. We usually go up and then back down and up, but because it's been reflected, I'm going to go the sign. Instead of starting at the origin going up then back down, it's going to be reflected, so I'm going to go down and then back up. So I'm going to go from my new starting spot. At the core time, I'm going to go down one, back to my intercept then up one, and back to my intercept. So then this would be the sine wave. And so I wanted to show you one here that deals with this horizontal shrink. Now, I could have also found our starting point by factoring out the two. So in this parenthesis, I could have wrote this as sine of two times x plus pi over two. If you factor it out, it's like dividing by it. That's a way of seeing that our horizontal shift is left pi halves. You can also find that by just taking and setting the quantity equal to the usual starting spot for the parent function. And then when you solve it, you'll find the horizontal shift. So most of the time, I'm just solving that and then uh, adding our period to find the end spot. So those are my examples. Call it good for the night. I will see you tomorrow.